what is up there everybody citrus aviation here with yet another video and today we're going to talk about the training that ramp agents go through so when you become a ramp agent at an airline there's a lot of training that you have to do right away it's one of those jobs where there's quite a bit of training once you've gone through the hiring process and passed your drug screening and your physical abilities test and all that stuff you have to go through you then start your training which is paid for by the airline the first part of the training that you will do once you get hired at the airlines is you will start online training or corporate training that's done on the computer. And this will vary depending on the airline. I'm just going to give you the example that I had with Delta Airlines. And our training takes about 40 hours to complete. That's right, 40 hours. That's the average work week that someone does. So you'll spend 40 hours in front of a computer model doing computer training. Now, I'm not going to say it was amazing because eh, it wasn't very fun, but it just is the reality of the situation. You're going to do a lot of computer training, particularly early on. But if you can get past that, if you can get past the dull drum and the boredom of the computer training, it gets way better past that. So you go through your computer training, and then once you've done that, you have the opportunity to go on to the next phase of the training. So the computer training is to start at any airline, as far as I'm, I know. Same thing for American, same thing for Delta, same thing for the other airlines, as far as I know. From there, you will go to a ramp class. Now, airlines will do ramp classes differently based on the airline. At Delta, we have a station trainer that will do the ramp class for you. So the station, which is the airport, has a trainer whose job is
that supervisors or training supervisors do? Well, there are other forms of training that you can take. In fact, for example, recently I just got my push qualification to push regional jets. So that was really exciting. Now I can push uh, regional jet aircraft, which is super awesome. And that is you can constantly get new qualifications. Like as I mentioned, I just got my push qualification, which was super awesome. And there are all sorts of things you can learn and get qualified to do. So one that a lot of agents, particularly aviation enthusiasts like myself, get really excited to do is to push aircraft because it's possibly one of the most interesting jobs that you can do on the ramp. It's also the one that has one of the most responsibilities associated with it because when you are pushing that aircraft, you are solely responsible for the aircraft, the baggage and cargo on board, the people on board, and for any vehicles and other aircraft that might make contact with the aircraft. So it's really, really important that you're paying attention, you follow the process exactly, and that you also pay attention to your wing walkers. They are your most valuable asset because the wing walkers can see what's going on around you because some of these airplanes you might be pushing are the size of a city block, like an Airbus 350 or 747. Gigantic aircraft. And you cannot see all the way, a quarter mile away necessarily. So that is why your wing walkers are very important. They tell you if your path is clear, you gotta pay attention to that. And you gotta pay attention to the red line or the unemployment line, where if you go past it, you get to be unemployed. That red line that you see right above the nose gear wheel on aircraft tells you how far you can turn the tug and how much of an angle you can put on to the nose gear before you break a sear pen, which causes potential aircraft damage. And you don't want that. Aircraft damage is automatic unemployment at an airline. So you can do all sorts of things. Pussing, you can get qualified to scan aircraft where you scan bags on and off. You can get qualified to be an AIC or even at some point a supervisor. You can get qualified to do the bag room. There's all sorts of fun things that you can get qualified to do and get better at doing. Some stations have more positions than others. For example, hubs will have more specified roles and jobs. For example, at a station, you might have your job for one day just dumping labs. And you might dump 25 different labs that day. You might go to 25 aircraft to service the labs. And that might be all you do. Whereas at a smaller station like Des Moines, we do everything. We bring the aircraft in, we unload it, we service it, we clean it, we load it, we push them out, we do everything. And that's something that a lot of bigger stations don't do. Because most bigger stations, whatever airline you work for, you will do a very specific job. If you work for a smaller station where you have maybe 10 or less flights a day, you're going to do everything. And so that's just the way it is. I personally like to do everything because that means I get to experience everything that a ramp agent can do and you're going to do it every shift. So that's pretty much how it is. And so if you're at a bigger airport and you're looking to be a ramp agent, just know that you're probably going to be more specified to do specific jobs and you're going to get qualified to do those. And then your extra qualifications will come later. So at a small station like the more we get qualified to do a lot very early on. Um, so you might not get qualified at a bigger station to do labs for six months. Or you might get qualified to do labs right away, but you won't see the bag room for a whole year. Things like that. So training is something that you're going to experience with your entire job. And then there's also pop-up training. We still have to do computer training. For example, every so often, Delta will come up with a new thing that we have to do. And everybody's required to do it. And they'll be like, okay, you have till May 30th to do whatever this training is or new training or an updated version of training that they want everybody to take and then not only that another big one that seasoned ramp agents have is recurrence so for those of you who've been around for a while you know and you love your recurrence or maybe you hate them for some of us we like them for some of us we don't like for example this month is may so this is my recurrent where i have to do one of my training which is on dangerous goods is required every single year that ramp agent has to do it it takes about eight hours or so to do your recurrent some people can do it quick in like two hours but you know it still takes a while to do it and so one of my breaks 
this month I'm gonna get all my uh, dangerous goods current that I have to do. I have to do that once every year on the month of my hire date. And then every other agent, they have to do it on their hire date. And then another thing I just did, I did my GSC drive-in recurrent where, you know, you, they do test drive to see if you can, you know, properly drive the GSC. Things like belt loaders, pushbacks, that sort of fun stuff. You have to do that once every month. And of course, everybody has to do that with their recurrent. And so usually a lot of these recurring trainings are going to be based on your hire date. So they'll be like, let's say you got hired June 7th. Well, on June 7th, you're going to have a lot of stuff due to do your recurrence or maybe it'll be for example a delta we do it by month so if your hire date was in june you have to do a lot of recurrence in june mine is may so i have a bunch of stuff i have to do this month to get caught up on my recurrence it's just sort of is something that ramp agents have to deal with when you're training and it's a sort of repetitive training that you have to do every single year so that's the sort of training that you're doing at the job as a ramp agent, there's constantly stuff to learn. It's not just when you get hired, although when you get hired will be the most. It'll be, it'll be like an endless flow of information, which for me is something I very much enjoy. But for some people, it can be very, very tedious. And so if you're currently watching this video and you're currently through that training process that you're going through initially, you'll get through it. It's, it's one of the toughest parts when you start the job. But it gets simpler and ramp class i i enjoyed my ramp class a lot a lot of people really enjoy their ramp class and it's it's one of your real first introduction into the job that you actually do once you step out of the computer training and you actually get into the practical training you see how it's done you actually start doing it yourself it's a ton of fun a lot of people enjoy the ramp class and then you get started with the job and you actually start doing it so yeah um, but you're constantly doing training. This is one of those jobs where there's a lot of it to do. Some of it can be a little bit tedious or monotonous, but it is a part of the job and something that you should be aware of when you become a ramp agent or if you are one right now. So that is my video today on training as a ramp agent. Um, future upcoming videos that I'll be doing on the series might include things like where I'll talk about specific topics. I'm going to do an in-depth tour of some aircraft. I got a video recently of the ERJ 190E2 walkaround, so I'll be doing a tour of that and talking about the E190E2 as a ramp agent and some of the things that you ramp ups can look forward to. But I'll also start doing videos on specific processes like how do you load an aircraft, for example, or how do you push an aircraft, or what do diversions do? What does that do to affect a ramp agent? Because diversions, those are very interesting. Usually they're not liked by ramp agents at all, but it is the reality of the situation. But we're going to do a lot of other videos on other topics. So I hope you enjoyed this third installment of what it is really like to be a ramp agent. These videos have been super popular. I want to thank you all so much for watching them. There seems to be a lot of interest in them, so I'm going to start doing these more often. So I want to thank you all so much for watching this episode. I hope you had a great video and a great rest of your day. Have a great day and God bless you.